tonight um, I got several text messages and inboxes about this new NFL ruling that the NFL is mandating the owners and uh, the league has mandated that all players who are on the field must stand for the national anthem. And the players, you know, who don't want to stand for the anthem, they do not have to be on the field, right? I got inboxes about this recent uh, assault here in Atlanta. Houston's restaurant, yes, the same Houston's and Hillstone's restaurant chain that we shut down right next door. Well, Lennox Road doesn't exist anymore. That's shut down. It's closed. We shut it down after a boycott. But after that, they agreed to discrimination, uh, uh, to change their policies and have diversity training and all this. Well, anyway, about a week ago, Ernestine Johnson and I, my fiance, we sat down with a young queen, Brittany, who was assaulted by a big 250-pound police officer, pushed to the ground, turned around, held on the ground. The guy walked in the girl's bathroom and dragged him out. You guys seen T.I. post about it. I want to talk about that in a second. Uh, just last week, my queen, EJ, Tamika Mallory, and others, uh, Yandy Smith, my son, the general, and others went down to Saraland, Alabama, where they protested and demonstrated for justice for Chakezia Clemens. Chakezia Clemens was the queen who was assaulted and sexually assaulted and molested, basically, in the Waffle House by a police officer who was arresting her, her clothes, her, her clothes, she was out on the floor, they pressed charges against her, um, all because she asked for a change of silverware. Um, so all these cases of injustice, I need y'all to really tune in, I do want you to share, because I, I, I want to teach, and I want to give us some game, and I, again, I think that leadership is lacking right now, I think the strategy, I can't say the leadership is lacking, I'm going to say, the strategies are off. And they're ineffective and they're outdated. And mind you, I've done sit-ins, I've done marches, I've done boycotts, I've done protests. I've been a part of demonstrations from Freddie Gray in Baltimore to Alton Sterling when he was murdered in Louisiana to our own Waffle House demonstration and a successful shutdown um, to Alfred Wright who was lynched in Hempville, Texas. So I'm speaking from a place of experience. I'm not a sideline hustler. I'm not a sideline activist. I'm not sitting in the bleachers or the stands telling other people who are putting in the work what they should be doing. I'm not that guy. However, I'm not saying that we should never protest, march, or sit in. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that our strategy is off. What I mean by that, historically and factually, statistically, African people in America, or Aborigines, some of you say, or Hebrew Israelites, some of you say, or Moorish Americans, some of you say, or Negro, some of you say, or New African, some of you say, or African Americans, some of you say. This, see, that's how fractured our community is, one. But, but this body of people, our people, have been historically and factually, statistically oppressed in this country. When I say oppressed, I mean it by the technical definition. Oppression means when a system, when someone feels burdened down or burdensome treatment by a system or by a higher power. And so this government system, this institution that we were colonized under, the United States of America, has statistically, statistically, and factually oppressed, burdened down African people in America. One of my points being, all this running around we have to do, all these demonstrations, these protests, these boycotts, these hashtags, these justice for Trayvon Martin, justice for Alan Sterling, justice for Renikia Boyd, justice for Tamir Rice, justice for Eric Garner. Like no community in the entire country has to have this many murder and death rate or discrimination hashtags. Don't have to suffer seeing their people assaulted, molested, lynched, murdered, wrongfully accused, wrongfully imprisoned, wrongfully kidnapped by police, incarcerated, just for Sandra Bland. 
This is oppression. This is second class citizenship. Second class citizenship is when those in a society, a group in a society, is not given their fair share as others in a society or not treated accordingly to others in the same society. So, I'm not here to talk about problems. I'm here to talk about solutions because I'm tired of the problems and I'm tired of our reactionary, uh, low leveraged approach to trying to solve these problems. And so, what I'm saying is this. This is what I realized, right? And mind you, I'm a demonstrator. I'm a frontline marcher, protester, demonstrator. I'm about that action. Face to face with cops in riot gear in Baton Rouge, in Baltimore, in Hempville, Texas, in the Boonies, in the Redneck Territory. I'm about that action. But what I realized is this no matter how bad about that action you are, if you are a little itty bitty warrior, Fighting a big old giant and bully. And just because you belt that action as a little itty bitty warrior, you swing a wild one and you catch the bully and you stagger him like how we staggered Houston's restaurant. That was a blow to white corporate America, white discriminative corporate America that, hey, if you mess with us, we can impact your dollars and we can shut you down. That was a victory. And I'm using my quotes here. That was a small win of a battle. Or we can shut down a bus line. We might get a couple laws passed. We can get these little, little bitty wins like justice for whomever. Oh, the cops, oh, they had to do six months in prison. Oh, they had to pay a fine. That's not real justice. Here's the problem. This, this is what I want to get to. I'm going to I'm gonna get to what we got here. The problem is black people, Africans in America, Moorish Americans, Hebrew Israelites, Nation of Islam, New Africans, Aborigines. However you see yourself, you know what I'm talking about. You come from the same diaspora. We lived out the same circumstances. Our heirs, our ancestors have had the same experiences. We are... We have no leverage... Even with that fraction, that division amongst us gives us no leverage. And we are a little itty bitty corporation talking to a major conglomerate trying to tell them what to do and how they should act and how they should behave. This is our problem. In business, if you are a one-man band, one-shop, fragmented, non-handbook having, non-core value having, non-operationalized, non-systemized, little itty-bitty small business, you have no leverage coming into my office. You can't tell me nothing. You need more people. You have no unity, you have no strength, you have no alliances. I used an example earlier. When the locks was trying to get out of their contract with P. Diddy, Puff Daddy had the locks, Jada Kiss, Styles P, and Sheik Looch under what apparently was a screwed up contract, per their opinion. And the locks went on for years trying to put pressure on P. Diddy to let them out of their contract. And P. Diddy like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Get on with yourself. You need more people. You don't have enough leverage or alliances or power to get a powerful force to move or act in some significant way on your demands. We as Africans in America have not unified ourselves enough to have enough power, enough leverage to really get America and the corporate racist establishments to move in any substantial or significant direction in a way that benefits us as a community. They won't. They don't have to. We have no unity. We have no collective, we have no camaraderie, and therefore we have no power. We can speak about the $1.3 trillion of spending power we have, but it's just good narrative, fam. We don't even know how to unify that spending power. We can't even unify ourselves around our goddamn name. We don't even know what to call ourselves. So how should a unified United States of American government 
and the lobbyists and the corporations that fund the government and benefit from the best of the tax loopholes and have the most power and infrastructure, why would any of them move to the beat of our drum when we have no power and no leverage? This is business 101. So we're talking about the NFL boycott. Okay, cool, I don't watch any games, and I don't. We talk about the Houston's restaurant. I'll never eat there again, and I won't. We talk about the Waffle House. They're cut off, and I do want justice for Jakezia Clemens and for, uh, I think it was Anthony Hall or Wall. Pardon me if I got your name wrong, King. In North Carolina, was choked outside the Waffle House, outside of police calling, or Waffle House calling police on him. I care. And I want justice for all of our people. But we are missing a major component to achieving that goal. Shutting down restaurants, sit-ins, boycotts, marches, rallies is not going to comprehensively achieve that goal. It's going to get us a little itty-bitty baby micro Minimal steps forward, progress and justice. Where we need to focus our energy, right? This is my whole point. Here's the whole point of this small little lecture. Black people, Africans in America, etc. We need to stop worrying about trying to fix them. And worry about fixing ourselves. Now I believe in dual accountability. I'm not saying let them off the hook. But we put so much energy in a boycotts and protests, demonstrations, and marches and put very little energy into our intentional unification and collaborative, collective force that we could have to accomplish those things way, way easier in a more seamless in a more effective manner. If we put more energy into fixing ourselves instead of fixing their policies, fixing, fixing their biasness, fixing their racism, fixing their hateful hearts, if we put less energy into trying to fix them and more energy into trying to fix ourselves, I think, I'm not sure, I'm a pretty wise man, pretty smart dude, I think we might get a little bit further. And we haven't tried that yet. What we've been doing has not yielded us many results in this 450 years. we got to stop all these hashtag unifications, all these boycott unifications. I'm cool with it. But let's rally our people around those smaller injustices, but then get us to come together economically to unify and socially and politically to unify around our nationality, our name through a plebiscite, a public vote. Let's vote on our nationality and our name so that group of people, that unified group of people can then build alliances with other countries and nations and then we may have an opportunity through some unified strength, power and alliances and collective action be able to make major blows towards the bully, the oppressor, who still continuously puts out these systematic oppressive policies and sentencing and police targeting and corporate discrimination. But we put too much energy talking about the problems, hashtagging about the problems, tweeting about the problems, marching about the problems. Listen, my mentor told me, if all you give out is problem, destroy. Let's destroy theirs. Boycott, boycott. Shut them down, shut them down. If all you put down is shut them down in the universe, all the universe is going to give you back is shut them down. If all you give back is frustration and anger to the universe, all the universe is going to give back is frustration and anger. But imagine if we put out in the universe, build. Build our own. The universe is going to give back. Build your own. 
We give back, unify, uplift. The universe will give back, unify, uplift. We're putting the wrong energy into the world, the wrong energy into the universe. We're putting the wrong energy into our collective efforts, and I am guilty. I've led marches, protests, and boycotts. They have their purpose. But we have to leverage that momentum and that unification of the boycott and the march and the demonstration to then say, here are the bigger plays, King King and Boss Queen. My brother, my sister is a bigger play. Not the macro, reactionary, small or minimal play. There's a bigger play. Let's take that same energy from the marches and the protests and discriminations and pool our dollars together and our resources together, just 50 million of that 1.3 trillion, and now let's go control our own destiny, control our own neighborhoods. And then we can talk from a position of power and leverage and strength. Without any unity, we have no strength. Without any finance and economic base, we have no strength. Tulsa is just an economic vehicle because we have none. We have no banks for us and by us. Yes, there's black-owned banks. The owners may be black. But what are the board of directors? What's their mission? What's their vision? How are they contributing towards the advancement of the black or African community in America? So because your business or bank or fund is black, cool, kudos. We're happy that your family hopefully will be successful and be proud of you and you may build some wealth. But how does that impact all of us? This fund, this economic vehicle, this fund's mission is intentional and purposeful and focused on the revitalization, advancement, upliftment of our community and urban communities throughout the country. It's about having a vehicle, a sophisticated infrastructure. We don't have infrastructure that's weak. If you are a community or an organization, a fraternity, a sorority, a religion, or any kind of group without infrastructure, you are weak. You have no leverage. You have no power. You do not deserve the right to be at the table. That's the problem. These marches, these boycotts, these demonstrations, these protests mean jack shit without real economic infrastructure, without real social and political infrastructure. These leaders, these panelists, these activists, these bloggers are misleading you. They either don't know any better or know better but choose not to do better. It is that simple. Tell them Jay Morrison said it. Because I walk it like I talk it. I will go in the streets and risk my life and my freedom for my people. I will protest, demonstrate, march, sit in, Boycott with the best of them. But I am intentional about building infrastructure, sophisticated, transparent infrastructure for the advancement of my race, of my community, of my people, of my village. And if your leader, if the activists you love, if the Pan-Africanists you love, if the political activists, economic activists, the Instagram activists, the rapper, the celebrity, the role model, the figure that you love has not built any economic or social or political infrastructure, substantial infrastructure, significant infrastructure, that benefits our community, they are bullshitting you. Excuse my language. Let's be frank here. Our lives are on the line.
I'll say it again. If you're a celebrity influencer who can build out other businesses, if you're an activist who can be on panels and write books and make circuits around the country, if you're a religious leader, you're a pastor, you're a minister, you're a bishop, if they have not built economic infrastructure or social or political infrastructure for the advancement of our people and they have the resources and the means and the capacity and intellect to do so but have not done so, they are misleading you, they are misguided, or misrepresenting the real solution for our people. Maybe they don't know any better then we must educate them and tell them better so they can do better. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. But if you go 10, 20, 30, 40 years of doing this work and haven't provided any kind of substantial infrastructure to move us along, I'm not saying you're not needed. Your passionate speeches and lectures and protests and demonstrations and religious ceremonies are welcome. They're needed. All of us need it. I'm not here to be divisive. So watch the full lecture. Don't take part of what I say. But what I am saying is we must be intentional about are we here to destroy and only talk about destroying them, destroying corporations, destroying America, putting destruction to the universe so destruction comes right back, or are we here to build something for ourselves? Because if our energy was let's build, 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 the universe would give back build, 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 build. And we have something to show for it. Currently, as I look around, and I'll, I'll, I've been doing this work about six years, four years to six years, that I've been woke, socially conscious, understanding my duty, as a black man in America to take care of my village and accepting and embracing that duty and that calling. I knew what it was from the beginning. From the very beginning. We got to get to the solutions. I don't want to sit here and debate the problem with you. We know the problems. I don't want to hash that part out. How do we fix the pain and oppression and mistreatment and socioeconomic condition of our people? It's that simple. If you're a leader, if the one is always posting the latest discrimination and injustice, if they're not building it or supporting those who are building it, I've seen people post so many discrimination cases, so many injustice cases, but won't repost the solution. Not just my solution, but any solutions. So I wanted to get off my chest. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested no more. I'm not. Public service announcement. I'm not interested no more in chasing my tail, running around to only battle on the front line. I'm not. When I was a drug dealer, in 1996, I started, 95, 96, 15 years old. I wasn't interested then at being on the corner and on the block and on the front line forever. I moved to push and weight by the time I was 17. I liked the elevating scale. And by the time I was in my early 20s, I was in three different states, supplying whole blocks. My point is, in this space of activism, community organizing, community leadership, I'm not interested. No, I'll go to the block. I'll go to the front line. I'll support. I'll fund the front line. But I'm not interested in solely focusing my energy on fighting others, trying to destroy others and their corporations and their infrastructure, and not focus at least an equal amount or greater energy into building our own. I'm not interested. If you don't want to put the same energy into building our own as you do tearing theirs down, 
I ain't your guy. I'm not with it. The same effort, same effort we put into shutting down Houston's, we're putting that now into Tulsa Real Estate Fund, June 1st, IPO. Everybody, let's buy some shares. Let's do it together. My name on it. Literally. The federal government is watching me. Literally. They watch it. SEC regulated, transparent fund. We all can be owners in. Taking everybody with me. What's up? June 1st, IPO. Buy your shares. $500 minimum investment, 10 shares. So we can go do something for ourselves as opposed to pleading, demanding. I'm not even saying we begging. We don't beg, we protest, we demand. But why I gotta demand you to do for me, that's not a position of power. See, a demand has to come with some kind of consequence or ultimatum in order to have some kind of power. If there's no consequence or true ultimatum or repercussion, how does your demand have any power? But I guarantee you, when we start pulling this money together, start buying back these blocks, start going to the foreclosure auctions, buying up whole towns, I guarantee they respect us then. We have no respect. Because we have not yet organized ourselves in a way that it will garner or has earned respect from these major corporations and this major corporation called the United States of America, which it is a corporation, this government. Big homies respect big homies. Plugs respect plugs. Bosses respect bosses. Bosses do not respect workers or peons. In the same light, they do another boss. This is our problem. This is a public service announcement. I'm not here to be kneeling and telling the NFL, hey, give my man Cap a job. That's my brother. Cool. I hope he gets a job. I hope he gets what he wants. I hope whatever happens to the NFL. I'm not here to go buy an NFL team. Nah. Why don't we go build our own? Stop being a sucker duckers quack quack at somebody's hem pulling down their they garment hoping for some crumbs to come down. That's not big boy language. It's not big boy posture. It's not nation posture. That's not it, y'all. I'm not here. I'm cool fighting for injustice again. To keep it a thousand with you. I'm cool with the fighting for injustice. I'm not here to knock nobody. What I'm saying is the same energy we put into boycotting the NFL, if we put that same energy into building our own league, we wouldn't have the same problems. We'd have the respect. Stop putting energy into fixing, excuse me, stop putting energy into trying to fix them and just go fix and build our own. That's my whole message. I hope, I hope Eugene can find a one-minute clip out of this to put on Instagram. I need this to go viral. I said a lot, but that's my whole message. NFL boycott, Houston's restaurant boycott, Waffle House boycott, police Brutality boycott. All these injustices. I'm not saying let go of those demonstrations or boycotts. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is if we're not going to put as much attention or energy into building our own as we do trying to destroy their wicked ways, we will never win this battle. It cannot just be destroy, 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 demand, 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 protest, protest, protest. At some point, it got to be build, build, build. Elevate, elevate, elevate. Pour, pour, pour into ourselves. That's what's missing. And if we're not going to build economic infrastructure or political or social infrastructure to advance our community, we are bullshitting. You fake and you fronting. You are giving an illusion of a reality that will never come. 
there will never be any real justice, redress, reconciliation, reparation, restitution. It will never come. If we can't organize ourselves to unify ourselves to vote on a name, if we can't figure out one goddamn name that we agree to be, we will never have unity or justice or repair. I told this to Dave Banner. I told this to Tamika Mallory. I told this to Boyce Watkins. I told this to my son. I told this uh, maybe to Killer Mike. I was getting there with him. Ernestine just told this to T.I. I've been I told this to Kaepernick. Face to face. Let's go unify. Then go align ourselves with alliances in Africa, Caribbean nations, or anywhere in the world who can join with us after they've seen that we were sophisticated and organized and intentional enough to unify ourselves, and then let's go be big boys at the table. What's so hard about that? What's to comprehend? Why can't everybody get that point? I don't get it. What don't you get about the power of a syndicate? There needs to be infrastructure. So I'll get to the Black Vote Day and that syndicate later. Since apparently nobody wants to take those steps, I'll do what God called me to do. So first, we're going to get this money up. We're going to get this big bag through Tulsa. Then at the Tulsa, we're going to organize ourselves and we're going to do Black Vote Day. And now we're going to have our first $50 million fund and which you best believe we do a 20 funds in five years, $1 billion in assets under management, all owned by the community. Best believe, mark my words. $1 billion of our community's assets in five years. And then we're going to organize ourselves and unify ourselves through a plebiscite, a public vote, and we're going to get the world court like big boys and girls, like the kings we are and the queens we are, and we're going to handle our business. And all in between that, we're going to introduce our African-American or Africans in America repair curriculum that's just about complete. We've been working on a repair curriculum for two years so we can repair ourselves while we get our bag up and we unify ourselves. This is the solution, young Malcolm. I'm not here to play with you. I'm not here for shits and giggles. I'm not here for likes. I'm here to liberate my people. I'm here to repair my people. I'm here to defend my people. I'm here to protect my village. If that don't resonate with you, I'm not your guy. And I'm okay with that. But if we are not going to build some substantial economic infrastructure and support each other in it, we are playing we are playing, y'all. Don't you see what's missing? Marcus Garvey did it in 1919. Bought boats and ships for import-export and to take us back to Africa. They infiltrated his organization. They locked him up for some wire fraud. Extradited him out the country, and that was that. Since then, Malcolm talked about it. Honorable Elijah Muhammad came close. Martin Luther King talked about the economic revolution. But no one carried the torch into creating the infrastructure we need outside of nonprofits, churches, mosques, temples, and civil rights organizations. That's not what we need. Or that's not all of what we need. Excuse me. It's needed. No knock. I'm not here to be divisive. But if we don't create real Infrastructure. I know I'm being repetitive. I gotta beat this through our, through our, through our heads, through our spirits. If we don't create real economic infrastructure and real social political infrastructure, if we don't create it, it will never exist. Our people will never advance. There will never be unity, justice, or repair. There can be no unity unless the people actually unify. Uni meaning one. 
There can be no unity unless we come together and literally, from an infrastructure, organizational, and functionality standpoint, a practical action step standpoint, unify. All what I said, I wrote down in a book. This whole solution is written down in a book. Best-selling book. This whole thing. And then, because I don't care about the book sales, you can get this book for free, the digital download at unitedafricansinamerica.com. This whole solution. Unitedafricansinamerica.com. I want you to have it. If you want to purchase a hard copy, go for it. If not, download it. My point being, and I really don't even want to wipe my sweat, I really want you to see how serious this is. I don't care about sweat. I don't care about blood. I don't care about tears. What I care about is the upliftment, the advancement, and the protection of my people. And we are doing a horrible job, a horrible job, in leadership, and I'm part of that leadership group. Black leaders in America are doing a horrible job of advancing our people. We failed. We have failed you all. And so, understanding that failure, I'm willing and ready, and I believe able and capable, to do something about it. We are not going to sit back another 60 years and still be singing the same civil rights songs, doing the same marches, the same protests, the same sit-ins, and the same demonstrations only. Now, see, I'm okay with them, but not only. Not without building real economic and political and social infrastructure. We are not going to sit back and do that. But you all, those who are the second tier of leaders, all of you all are leaders, you got to participate in the solution. You can't hear this video and share it and like it, but then never participate when it's time to put your money where your mouth is, whether it's Tulsa Fund or the next leader's fund. If they're capable, if they can do it, if they built the infrastructure, if it all adds up, support them. I'm not here for personal gain, for personal glory, but somebody got to build what we need. And then the community has to support and engage in what we need. Whether it is an economic fund, or it's the Black Vote Day, or a unity fund, or whatever that looks like, a school, a repair curriculum, we have to do for ourselves. We have to stop waiting to do for ourselves what God already gave us the power to do. You wait for the American government to fix you. You demanding things from corporations without any leverage. It's bad business. We cannot, and we will not. And I hope everyone understands, I'm saying this with love. I'm not trying to knock nobody. I'm not dissing nobody. I'm challenging us as a community, and I'm challenging my fellow leaders. Look at the man in the mirror. I'm not saying I do everything right. I've got to be held accountable too. I had an opportunity to build with some brothers and sisters and I came to the table, and I wasn't as, uh, what's the word, harmonious, or, 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 or uh, camaraderie, whatever. I made mistakes. We all make mistakes. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying that, you know, you all bad. It's not that. It's not my tone. It's not my spirit. What I'm saying is, let's call it for what it is. Let's recognize our errors. Let's pivot. And let's redirect our ways. Let's refocus our energy and refocus our attention to not focusing so much on fixing them and let's focus more on fixing ourselves. I appreciate everyone that watched this, that shared this, that liked this. I will I want to see your comments. What's your feedback? There's no cap. There's no hate. This black love in the flesh. But I'm going to tell you, watch 
the difference when we can come to the table with our own unified. I ain't talking about one rich person, five rich people. I'm talking about a community, a collective, a syndication, a crowd who all participates in the riches in the risk and the rewards together. Watch the difference in our power and our leverage. We come to the table with some real assets and ammunition. And then watch how we can leverage within our own community our successes with Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Watch how we can leverage that proof of concept, that beta test, that guinea pig, they call it. Watch how we can leverage that to show the rest of our community, we're non-believers, of what we can do together and why it makes sense to unify. If we can unify around money, we can unify around our identity and our social and political needs. Malcolm X said it best. We're suffering from political oppression, economic exploitation, and social degradation. And so everything I do since Malcolm gave us that diagnosis in his speech that you all should watch, you all should watch, you all should watch the ballot or the bullet. YouTube it. The ballot or the bullet. Watch it. Sit your children down. Watch it. It's gospel. And so I've dedicated my life to providing antidotes to that diagnosis our forefather, our hero, our ancestor has given us. So I look to, to combat political oppression, combat economic exploitation, combat social degradation. It's why I call you king, and it's why I call you queen. I've been doing it for two and a half years. I'll never call you nigger, and queen, I'll never call you a bitch. Never call you a chick, never call you a thot. You are a queen to me on your worst day. And my brother, my king, you are never my nigga, but you will always be my king, even when you don't see me as the same. We're taught that we have to love our people more than they hate themselves. I'm willing to do that. That's a challenge, unconditional love. But we have to combat these diagnoses. We have to bring solutions to the table. We have to cure our ailments. We can't keep focusing on destroying and getting caught up in the evil and wicked ways of others. We got to get caught up in our own self-love, in our own building, and our own elevation. That's the only way we win. Mark my words. To continue to do the same things over and over again is insanity. If you're expecting different results. We can't do the same things and expect different results. They're going to yield the same results. We got to do something different. And that different is infrastructure, organization, practical action steps, solution-oriented businesses, business models, plans, ideals, and then backing them up, putting the effort, the energy, the time, and the treasure, the money, the capital behind them. Before anybody believed in Tulsa, we put our money up. Before anybody bought into the vision and the ideal and theoretically talked about it, we invested over two years of our time. I personally invested nearly eight years since I had this idea and concept of pulling our dollars and resources. Four years that I've been more intentional about it and two plus years that I've been focused on it. This is real life. So I appreciate your blessings, your support, your prayers. We need them. Um, and I hope this message lands on receptive ears and on warm hearts. And I hope you all are willing to take action and have the same level of conviction for the advancement of those who are underserved and at least amongst us. I don't care what nationality, what ethnicity, what race you are. You can invest in our fund. 
You can build with me. I'll build with you. Malcolm X, he, he, before he passed away, before he was assassinated, he said, I'm willing to work with anyone of any race, any nationality, any color, as long as you're about ridding this injustice that is here on earth. That's Jay Morrison, young Malcolm. I feel the same way. I'm not discriminative. I'm not a racist. I recognize where certain communities or certain nationalities, certain ethnicities might have a track record that's pretty questionable. But I understand that I can't hold everyone accountable for the errors or the errant ways or even wicked ways of their ancestors. I'm going to judge you in the character of your heart and your morals, as I hope you judge me on mine. So I'm coming to the table with a different vibe. But first plan of action, Tulsa Real Estate Fund, June 1st, offering a million shares, $50 per share, $500 minimum investment for 10 shares. You get an 8% preferred return and 50% of the profits that we make together. Breaking bread, straight like that. As fund managers, we get a 5.5% management fee and we get the other 50% share of the profits. Fair exchange, no robbery. There's a one-year lockup period, right? This ain't no short, quick flip. Lock up your investment for one year. If there's a super emergency, we have some provisions where we may be able to, you know, redispose of some funds, but the, the goal is to lock up one year. After that one year, we pay dividends, that 8% preferred return, those profits, every quarter, every three months, every 90 days. And we go out here and let's do some business. Simple as that. People say, oh, it's a, it's a pyramid scheme, it's a scam. Listen, this is a SEC regulated fund. Go to sec.gov, search the Edgar search, put Tulsa Real Estate Fund in, you can see our entire subscription agreement, our entire operating agreement, our entire circular, our entire audit. Transparency. What more you want? So this is the opportunity that we have to invest together as a collective, as a group. I'm putting my, and we are, I should say, putting our own money into the fund. And we have already. But it's an opportunity for everyone to participate in this economic revolution, in our unity around the black dollar. That dollar Jesse Larry has talked about, that everyone went viral about, Ernestine commented on, everyone else, that black dollar. Let's harness that black dollar. Let's own shares and equity together. Be a shareholder. Anyone who invests on June 1st, the first day, the first 24 hours, will be an honorary founder. Your name will go on our website, and your name will go on the bricks of our first project or the plaque or statue, whatever we create. If you can't invest June 1st, do not stress yourself. Invest after and still be a partner and shareholder. Do not invest more than you can afford to lose. Of course, we don't plan on losing any money, but I want to give you full disclosure, full disclaimer. But let's go out and do something for ourselves that has never been done for us, or at least hasn't been done in the last 99 years since Marcus Garvey in 1919. All this leadership we don't have, all these intellectuals, all these thought leaders, all these executors, all these activists, all these businessmen, all these rappers, all these ball players, all these celebrities, all these Hollywood stars, we have not done this for ourselves since 1919. I'm not boasting myself up. I thank God for giving me the vision. All praises go to him. But this means nothing if we don't come to the table and go make it happen. This is just step one to a macro vision for our holistic, comprehensive solution. It's Tulsa, T-U-L-S-A, realestatefund.com. Follow Tulsa on Instagram, at Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Follow me at Mr. J. Morrison. Go to the YouTube. There'll be a replay of this video at Mr. J. Morrison on YouTube and across all social media. Please like our fan page, Mr. J. Morrison. This is who I am. This is me in the flesh. And if you look at it, my body of work, not my words, my body of work. Look at my resume. Look at my track record. Look at my love that I've exhibited through actions for my community, for my village, if you see that, you'll see my heart and who I really am and who you'll be partners with. When we do this, we will be partners together. 
And so let's partner up. Let's collaborate. Let's Voltron, I call it. Let's pull our dollars, our treasure, our resources, our time, our energy, our relationships. Let's pull it together and let's focus as much energy on fixing ourselves as we have been. It, more energy on fixing ourselves as we have been focusing on putting into trying to fix somebody else. How are you going to change somebody else before you even change yourself and your condition? It's backwards. I love y'all. I'm out. Peace.